Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, I'm just going to uh, fit this uh, BTL driver chip um, onto the Sega Saturn um, board. So as you can see, I removed that previously, nice and clean there. Um, and you'll see what I mean about the when I mentioned the last video about my experience with many years ago fixing printers and you know I had seen these sorts of chips with the the two cutouts there um, being you know sort of high current. Uh, drivers and stuff. Um, you used, you know, they were for driving motors back in the day. The print heads and things, um, driving the, you know, the solenoids there for the pins on the print head. Um, and I think it's to do with surface area. You know, maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these cutouts here, it's just designed to try and maximise the surface area a bit. And they've got, they seem to have some sort of metallic um, top there. It looks white, but it's like a silvery metallic sort of thing. I guess it probably extends to the the, the die inside. Um, anyway solder this on now and we'll give it a try. Okay well the new chip's on there now. Um, I've got a step out here, I did a little bit of tweaking with some of the pots and things and made a note of all of the resistance values on those and the focus gain and the tracking um, and the error, uh, focus error adjustment or whatever it is. Um, but I put them all back as they were, I was getting nowhere with it, it was still dead. Now the other thing I did do, I thought okay well I've messed around with the height, the spindle adjustment there, you know the height where the disc sits inside this tray here. Um, I'd adjusted at various points trying to, you know, with the original problem there, trying to just determine whether it was the laser having problems trying to focus on the disc due to the height of the spindle. Um, and I thought, okay, well, I didn't reset that. So after moving it back down to um, where it, approximately where it should be, I think, which is just above the plastic level here, so that it's quite close to the um, the laser there, you know, you can see it's, it's very um, it's very low down, you know, it's nowhere near as uh, high up as it was. It started working, as I'll show you if I switch this on. So there you go, it detects the disc and starts to spin. So those two faults, um, or two issues if you like, combined, that chip, that driver chip, that BTL driver chip, sorry camera's at an angle here, uh, you should be able to, about to see that I think. Just up a little bit, you can see the game starts to load already there. I've just adjusted the um, laser voltage a tiny, tiny bit as well. Um, it's stuttering a little bit on the FMV. It's perhaps just needs a tiny, tiny, tiny tweak. That bit's okay. See so the next bit here is 95% okay. Stutters a bit at the end, I think. In fact, that was okay this time. So I'm confident that that's uh, working okay. I'm not sure about the speed of the spindle here. If you look how fast that's going round, it slows down for CD audio, which is probably right. Like a single speed for CD audio and I presume it's double speed for data. As you can see, the uh, game's loaded there, so let's just do a quick test of this. Uh, I'll just start it, start it, obviously. I'm pleased with this though, because um, again, it's one of these, you know, it was like four or five pound or something, um, and it was just scrap. It was, you know, it was gonna end up landfill. And it was pretty dirty. Um, I'll clean this up in a minute so you can see how well it's come up uh, with the polish and stuff. But I'm really pleased and uh, overall with this. So I'm going to get the mod there so I can uh, use uh, burnt discs and things with it. I'll just start this. Press start again. New game. Again, not sure about loading times. Is that normal? It's a bit slow this, I'm not sure it's because of the controller I'm using. Maybe it slows the game down a little bit to use the pad, I've got no idea. Sounds alright, looks alright, apart from the you know, blockiness of that sort of era of console. This is when the 3D was first sort of kicking in with a console level, the PlayStation 1. In fact I played this on the PS1. This is one of my favourite games on the PS1, I just love this game. But it's a bit faster paced from what I remember on the PS1. It certainly uses a control with an analog stick. Um, using the D-pad, it's uh, oh, oh, yeah, a bit of an overkill there. <laughs> Hitting with a rocket. Uh, yeah, I'm mean, some fun with this, I'm sure. You can that chopper out, I think. Very hard with the D-pad. Need an analog stick or something like that. You know, maybe a light gun that's on the roads in the LCD, you need a CRT with it. Well, not really, but definitely you need a CRT to use light guns. Um, due to the lack of the, uh, the way it displays the picture on CD TVs. 
tend to update the segments and things uh, in the screen rather than refresh the whole screen once every uh, age blank or whatever it is. The V blank doesn't work. Sweet. It's awesome. I didn't think this was going to come back from the, the dead, I really didn't. I had some, some doubts, especially after I'd swapped the driver chip out, it still wasn't working. Um, but the driver chip's definitely the fault um, because I did a lot of playing around adjustment with the, uh, the height of the spindle there. And it's in the same position now as it was several times before, and I was just getting nothing. So uh, the laser, um, and the laser probably was part of the problem as well. You know, it's got, it's got a brand new laser here. quite as good as the PS1 version I don't think this. I think the PS1 PS1 from what I remember has got a bit more filtering, some sort of I don't know, this biolinear or something filtering going on um, on the textures and things there. And it just it, it seems to run a little bit smoother, uh, I would say. It's probably got perhaps got a higher frame rate. Um, but overall it's pretty good this on the sound. I'm pleased about this. I'll uh, have to look out for some more um, Saturn original discs. Um, Please let me know recommendations, things, comment in the comments if you've uh, got any, uh, if you know, of, you know, some of the best tiles or ones worth getting. Uh, I'm not a fan of beat ups and stuff. I have to admit, I like you know sort of RPGs, uh, shoot ups, things like this. Uh, standard shoot ups, you know, uh, things like fast strike and that sort of game. I'll do very well. Yeah. the music on this game as well, it's just so well done, it really is, for, for that era. The carnage as well, you know, once you get going, certainly from what I remember the PS1, the damage, you know, explosives going off everywhere, you know, lots of scenery damage and stuff, it's, it's quite an achievement really, uh, at the time, it's really showcased what the PS1 was capable of doing, it's, you know, obviously in this case the sun. When you compare it to similar shooter games like Virtua, Cop and stuff like that, this is obviously leaps and bounds, but there's just so much more going on. Uh, much more interaction with the environment, with that scenery damage, lots of civilians things to save, tons and tons and tons of way more enemies. Uh, obviously loads of different weapons and things. Uh, I can't remember, there might be even multiple routes on this, there might be different ways the surface can play out, I can't remember. There might be like, you know, A and B type directions, I've got no idea. Um, but this is highly recommended. Anyway, I'll show you the uh, console uh, case now after I've cleaned it up. So I'm just doing the usual thing I uh, always do really with uh, any console like this, especially one that's uh, suffered any kind of, got any kind of corrosion on the shielding, and that's just to uh, wipe it down, uh, well, remove any rust uh, using a bit of a wire brush and stuff, and, and then just give it a wipe with a rag with a bit of WD-40. Um, that just helps stop any uh, corrosion um, continuing, you know. Um, or any new corrosion starting, it, you know you can't see it, but it obviously clean you're cleaning up the shielding as well at the same time. Um, it just helps, you know, because let's say I said on other videos last year you want the flakes of uh, rust landing on your board and stuff, um, and a lot of these old systems do have, uh, in some cases, extraordinary amounts of uh, shielding. I mean, you can see how black that's that is now, and there's bits of corrosion and stuff on there, from some points and things as well. It'll just stop that. Um, from continuing or getting worse. So you can see what I mean there, just on the corner there, a little bit of rust. It's just a case, I mean that's quite bad rust actually, it's just a case you use a wire brush, flake off uh, the majority until you get down to the bare metal again and then treat that like I say with some WD-40 uh, or some other sort of suitable oil. Uh, yeah that was quite deep actually, it's taking quite a bit with wire brush there to get that to come off. As you can see, you know, we're back to sort of, you know, we'll expose damaged metal there, so let's give it a bit of a wipe. And that should stop it. So inside of the plastic case there cleaned out, shielding cleaned out, get the board back in. You'll notice I've just swapped out one of the caps here. I've not got an SMD equivalent. Um, I'm not that fussed, to be honest. If you're going to do a professional job yourself, you should uh, you know, try and get an SMD part. You've got very little clearance on this side anyway, and the reason I've swapped that out is because the cap was at sort of 40, well, uh, an angle. It wasn't straight 
like that one there, it was like as if it'd been knocked, and the whole the, this the the, the, the sub board that connects to here, um, obviously been floating around, and I think that it damaged that in transit. Um, I'll have to look back at my previous video for this just to see if I can uh, notice that cap, um, you know, in that position. But I had not noticed it when we did the uh, just that first video there and gone over the board. But I suspect it probably would have been shown at an angle. Um, I haven't measured it. The cap was probably all right. Um, all the other caps look okay. Um, it's just a case of just screwing everything back down now and then get the shield in, uh, the top piece of shielding back on and get the drive back in. So you can see an awful lot of corrosion here. Um, gonna need to treat that. Same thing, scratch it all off and then uh, give it a trip. coat of oil. An awful lot there. So there you can see uh, most of it's, uh, it's off there now. The redness has gone. Um, just a bit of oil. I mean, you can see, you know, the rust that's come off there, that's ridiculous, that was really bad, that bit. Um, lots of uh, something leaked on there, water or something, uh, perhaps stored in a damp condition. Uh, maybe it's had something drip through the case, don't know. So that's all the internals we assembled there. Um, I'm not going to bother taping these things down, they're not going anywhere, so uh, that's okay. Uh, just need to uh, get all the, you know, the lid back on there and th this uh, little clip there to hold the, the wires down. But before I do that, I'll just show you the wire that goes there, which is the lid sense switch, which is this green wire. Um, if you look, at, I need to clean this up here, if you look at the switch, can you see there's some corrosion going on around there? So I want to treat that the same uh, along this side here, and you can see that a bit further off. If you look at the screw near the power supply, um, just up there, there's some rust on that screw as well. So, And the other thing I need to do is, you can tell, but someone soldered both of the contacts on that switch, um, you know, to make the lid, uh, think it's, or the system think the lid's open all, uh, shut all the time. So I'm just going to unbridge that, and hopefully that'll still work. There's also a bit of rust on that spring there, but those are the final steps now, really, just to clean those bits off and I can reassemble the lid. There we go, all reassembled. Uh, I don't know if you can remember what state this was in when I first got it. Um, it was absolutely filthy, scratched up, marked up, uh, you know, there were some horrendous marks on it. Uh, my controller needs a bit of cleaning there, so it's got some paint flex on this controller. But as you can see, there's, you know, there's barely a mark. They've all come off with plastic cleaner. There's a couple of little marks here, and obviously the odd little scratch around the, uh, that clear, the, you know, the uh, piece of plastic there with the access lights and things. But uh, yeah, it's quite really well. So one final touch for this, I've got a, a Sega uh, Chrome sort of sticker there, uh, I might stick it on the front, I'm not sure. Um, I was thinking about overlaying it over the top of that actually, over the original thing there. It would probably just fit, it looks look exactly the same size letters, don't know. Um, they're easy to get off, you know, it's not a permanent thing, but uh, it will certainly look, uh, you know, just give it that finishing touch really. So the only thing I'm lacking on this is uh, the cover for the uh, bay there, at the back. So I'll see if I get one of those at some point. Um, I'll get a cartridge for this as well, for the, the memory backup there, 4 meg one or something. And obviously I'll get a few more games. Um, but one thing I'll just show you now, uh, if I open the lid and switch it on. Yeah, it comes straight on on the TV. But obviously there's no ac no activity there at all because this, I've re-enabled re the switch as it should have been done originally. So as I close that, don't know you can hear that. Seek it away there, it's just checking this format so presumably I'll be able to launch that in a sec. There we go, start application. Sweet. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.